one more quick section. I want you to know what this looks like. Give me epoxy off the top. I took the rudder, put it on top of the vertical stabilizer, marked where I wanted my parts, made sure that the two were abutting one another, and uh, there you can see the piece sticking up, and I've got at least that much sticking out beyond the other side. That's more than the size of my cup. So I won't have too much to stand away, but I, I make sure that I have enough there to at least uh, address the condition. And I'll take you over to the, the vertical stabilizer and show you how it looks. Son of a gun, I promised. Here we go. Now, of course, this is before cleanup. I'll get a stick in there and clean that up. That's it's up again above the surface. Squish it in there fully. And I've got flocks underneath it as well to make sure that um, the bond along the edge is not the only thing bearing load. It's also bearing it on the end. You're thinking, move your hands, dummy. Yes, I'm thinking the same thing. Um, okay. Now, that should be it <laughs> for this portion of the tape. And if I come back again, uh, please excuse me. Well, again, I lied. I'm going to show you here the elements of uh, putting on a nut plate. Start off with the things that you need. Number one. A drill with um, a number 40 piloted 100 degree countersink. The drill itself, of course, the micro stop would help. You can do it without it, but it's very difficult. A uh, rivet squeezer. The tool for setting up your K1000. It's a, it's a jig. Sets you right up on center. I'll show you how to use that. The seven nut plates themselves. The AD rivets. Uh, these are O condition here. These, oh no, these are ADs too. Yeah. These are dead soft. They can be soft or ADs. It doesn't really matter. Um, and I'll show you another way of, of, of putting a, a, a K1000 in place without using the drill jig. We can actually use the K1000 as um, a jig or a fixture to position the holes for drilling. And uh, we'll go through the first step right now. I'm going to pull the hinge and be back with you in a moment. Okay, the first thing we'll presume is that you have these holes drilled and that they are drilled the correct diameter. Now, if you've never used one of these before, look through the lens here and make sure that I can see what you're seeing. And you have a, two pins on this side, one pin on this side. This portion of the tool is for drilling offset when you have, a, have um, the hole and then two rivets. And from this side of the, the jig is for standard K1000s. So since there are no pins on this side except the large one, that's obviously going to be the side we put down. This is the point of reference. We need a hole drilled in, in our piece of wood here, which I have there. Again, I'm going to check the camera so you can see. I'll bring it up close. I want this edge fairly parallel to this. Of course, the, the, it's only a matter of artistry where the um, symmetry of the parts is concerned. 
these are aircraft structures. Mutinous does count. Now that I've got the first hole drilled, I flip. And I drop this pin into the previously drilled hole. Giving me a lineup. That's the result. Now I'm going to drill all of these before I set up for countersinking. the way I would normally because I'm trying to stay out of your view so you can see what I'm doing. Pin, reposition, and uh, of course you can, you can choose a straight drill bit. So I just did two holes. And make sure you choose the right reference. And uh, think about what you're doing before you do it. it does help. That's how it's supposed to look. Ignore the hole here. Yeah. That's not reason for rejection, of course. Um, I'll do all of these and then we'll come back and countersink and I'll show you that section as well. Okay, back again. We've set the, the drill press so it'll only go just deep enough to countersink. Remember I talked about the microstop? <coughs> well, I forgot that the microstop would have struck this portion of the hinge. Or it could have uh, worked correctly. The idea here is we want the we want the rivet to sit just a hair above flush or flush. Adjust it again. Do it one more time. You can do these one at a time without setting the micro stop. <coughs> but it's um, not advisable. You would like some consistency here. Perfection, where riveting is concerned, and such things does not just happen. It's something you have to plan for it and work for. Not yet. Well, I can see the problem. <coughs> My drill press doesn't go down that far. <laughs> Very simply. I'll be back with you in a moment after I have the countersunk set correctly and I've drilled all the holes and I'll show you how to set up some rivets. Okay, I'm holding it up tight in place. I could have a, a Clico on this side. I'm going to pull down against the head of the rivet as I squeeze. And there is a correctly upset rivet. I'll see if I can do it a little differently this time and show you from a different angle. Uh, I'm pulling against the head of the rivet with the upper portion of the rivet set. And Mr. Dexterius here. And bang. There is the final product. Now what 
what I didn't mention to you before was that if you do not have one of those special tools, you can place this like so. You're going to screw up from underneath and holding it in place, drill one hole, drop a rivet in it to keep it from turning, and then drill the other hole. Works just as well. It's not quite as neat and trick, but uh, that is how you do. That's how you do all of your nut plates. Um, back with you in the next section.